Hey everyone, Tony here, and today I'm going to make a case for why driving, well, stinks. Ten years ago, after watching Al Gore inform us of our pending doom, I have to say I felt more than a little guilty about my own contributions to this climate change mess. Driving around every day weighed on me. That inescapable guilt of producing CO2 and greenhouse gases. But how much greenhouse gas was I really producing? So let's start our little journey by considering a liter of gasoline. This weighs a bit under one kilogram, and I can drive about eight kilometers on it. Nothing fancy yet, but when you burn it, it turns into two and a half kilograms of CO2. Well, that's right, partner. You're adding a couple of oxygens to that carbon to make CO2. I mean, I'm driving my eight kilometers down the road, burning my kilogram of gasoline, and I'm leaving this behind, right? Uh-uh. Two and a half kilograms of CO2 looks like this. It's about one and a half cubic meters. Let's take it a step further. One tank of gas of 50 liters, it produces this much CO2. And if that's not startling enough, let's look at what happens when you drive 25,000 kilometers a year. I don't even have enough Lego to make the block. And I get it that our atmosphere is higher than where we're flying around in airplanes, but I don't think our atmosphere is really all that big. When I look out my airplane window, there's not that much space down there. This is an airplane at 80,000 feet, and they're wearing spacesuits, and they're looking at stars. And that airplane we were on? It's above that orange and red stuff. Our atmosphere is not a limitless dumping ground. There is no escaping it. I was aware of my complicity. But don't despair. Pay attention more to our scientists and not our politicians. Because, well, now you know. <laughs>